Let's talk about Pride Month. Let's talk about LGBTQIA plus humans. Their current standing in our suck ass society and uh, adjacent topics of interest. Let's not spend too much time on this uh, first point, but uh, we can uh, talk just one more time about how gross it is that corporations now spend the entire month of June pandering to gay people with a cavalcade of rainbowized logos, you know, <laughs> for their evil empires. You've heard it by now, you know, it's, it's not a new observation, but I just want to reiterate how weird it is that anyone in the world of any sexual persuasion would want or need their romantic activities to be approved of by Pfizer or Nestle. I mean, hell, the former CEO of Nestle, Peter Brabeck Letmath, said that uh, the people who think water should be a human right are extremists. Water. You know what a man who thinks water isn't a human right, but a commodity to be traded is capable of doing for money? Anything. If $10,000 appeared in his pocket every time a human being was stabbed to death, he'd send an army of knife-wielding maniacs after your family in a heartbeat. And anyone who said he was wrong to do it, he would label them an extremist. So... Why would anyone ever seek approval from a company like Nestle? A company whose business model involves literal slave labor. A company who poisons babies, pollutes the earth, and treats its employees like garbage. If the Nazis were still around, would they be holding up rainbow flags by now? Oh yeah, I forgot. That happened. Okay, all right. Relax, right-wingers. I know Trump isn't Hitler. He's just a lot like Hitler. Minus the ability to paint or to deliver a coherent speech. You, you know what Trump is? He's Hitler for dummies. Uh, 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 you people, you just call everyone Hitler now. Uh, uh, uh. Whatever. <laughs> you, you called Obama a Kenyan socialist. You remember that? And that's just totally false. And... You called Joe Biden a dementia-addled fool that doesn't know what he's doing. And that's, um, well, okay. Sometimes even the right is right. Anyway, Pride Month is now a verdant battleground in the so-called culture war. I always wondered about this culture war, you know. Who exactly are the combatants in this fucking thing? As far as I can tell, it's right-wingers who are pro-freedom of speech until... There's a gay person in a library book. Hmm, freedom of speech, not so great then. And left-wingers who are gravely concerned about the real issues that face our country. And that's why they spend 50% of their time airing grievances on Twitter and the other 50% of their time arguing about, I don't know, Vosh's pubic hair or something equally inane. Sorry, Vosh, you know, I, I don't think your pubic hair is inane. Uh, I, I plan to discuss it next week. Uh, uh, Twitter is like the turd that clings to my, my butt cheeks of my mind. You know, I, I just try to shake it off, but it just dangles there. And I have to be honest, uh, lately Twitter's been uh, uh, blowing up about this uh, drag show in Dallas, where I guess there were some kids present. Even uh, Shoe On Head seemed to side with the right-wingers on this one. I think mostly uh, it's because this uh, suggestive slogan on the wall that says, it's not gonna lick itself. Which, as my friend Paul pointed out on his Twitter, is far less suggestive than the uh, popular campaign slogan for Richard Nixon in 1972, which was, They can't lick our dick. <laughs> Pretty crazy to think that Shoe on Head is actually to the right of Nixon supporters. Well, actually, it's not that crazy at all. It's more just, uh, sad. If you're offended by this, uh, shit, let me remind you that, um, Hooters has a kid's menu. Let me remind you that uh, these are the cheerleaders for the Dallas Cowboys. Let me remind you that where I grew up uh, near New Orleans, kids were and still are taken to Mardi Gras parades that feature all kinds of skimpy outfits and suggestive movements. And occasionally, even the more family-friendly parades, you uh, will see a woman flash her naked breasts to the guys on the floats in order to procure cheap plastic beads. Uh, let me remind you that these Carl's Jr. ads aired on national television, 
And if your reaction to all of that is, I sleep, but your reaction to this is uh, real shit, then I think you might want to consider the possibility that maybe you're just a, a wee bit homophobic and you don't actually care about what you're pretending to care about, uh, namely protecting kids. Because, you know, two things happened in Texas recently. One thing is that uh, 21 people, including 19 kids, were killed. And an additional 18 people, mostly kids, were injured. These kids were shot by a crazed gunman uh, because of incompetent and cowardly police. The other thing that happened in Texas was this drag show where some kids saw men dress up like women. Republicans uh, defend the guns that were used to murder the kids. They defend the cops who allowed the kids to be murdered. Republicans block any legislation to protect them at all. Even as they blame mental illness for the massacre, they won't put more money into treating mental illness either. They literally are not willing to do a single thing, to lift a single fucking finger to uh, help prevent the murder of kids like those who died at Robb Elementary School. But when a drag show comes to town, these pieces of fucking evil, subhuman garbage immediately start trying to draft legislation to put it to a stop. Because it's okay for kids to be shot in the fucking face, but not to see a crossdresser. Uh, anyone who believes that, and apparently that's a huge chunk of this failed and broken nation, uh, is lost. Hopelessly. Utterly. Listen to the swamp shaman, folks. He knows the way. Meanwhile, in the state of Ohio, the nastiest and most evil anti-trans bill yet has been introduced. If you haven't heard of this legislation, you're going to think I'm fucking lying to you, but I'm not. It's called uh, Save Women's Sports Act. House Bill 151, and uh, it's already passed the House, just has to pass the Senate in Ohio. Uh, any girl playing sports whose sex is disputed, it can be disputed by anybody, must undergo an external and internal exam of her reproductive anatomy, uh, be tested to make sure she has normal levels of testosterone, and be subject to genetic analysis. Now, this law is written for girls K through 12, Republicans are so fucking blinded by their insane and irrational fear and hatred of trans people that they are now mandating genital checks for any girl whose gender is disputed. Is that really protecting girls' sports? Because uh, the possibility of having to undergo invasive and horrible tests just to prove that you're female is probably going to scare a lot of female athletes away from participating in sports in Ohio. And with a uh, now conservative stacked Supreme Court, who, are, who we already know are plotting to overturn Roe v. Wade, thanks to the courageous leaker, we're also going to be facing the imminent end of gay marriage in this country because uh, this Supreme Court is going to roll back the clock on every ounce of hard-fought social progress that this country has made in the last 50 years. Now, Ronald Reagan once said that the scariest words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. And as in most instances, Ronald Reagan was wrong. The scariest words or word, actually, in the English language is protect. But only when it comes uh, from the mouth of a Republican, or a conservative, or a disaffected liberal, or a classical liberal, or whatever fucking euphemism they're using for fascist these days. No matter who they're beating down, it's always somehow this noble act of protection, right? Denying rights to gay people becomes protecting marriage. Discriminating against trans people becomes protecting women. Making it easier for mass murderers to do their thing becomes protecting the Second Amendment. Discriminating against drag queens becomes protecting the children. Censoring books also becomes protecting the children. Depriving women of rights becomes protecting the unborn. These people don't protect a fucking thing. They exist to cause harm and to make life miserable for anyone that's not like them. They are a social cancer, metastasizing in our body politic, endlessly replicating themselves and patiently waiting for the day that they can go mask off and reopen the death camps. And if you think I'm being hyperbolic or histrionic, then you're in fucking denial. And how can this be stopped? How can we avoid this fate? They're focused on quantity. You know, they want more of themselves, endless replication. They want to have every dipshit in America on their side, in their corner, listening to their dumb fuck talking points. 
And that way they can use the flawed mechanisms of democracy to have stupid people vote for their own cages. We, as in the people who are listening to me right now and know down to the bones, their bone marrow, that, that every goddamn word I'm saying is, is just dead on balls accurate, we must focus on quality. One of us must be more capable than thousands of them. That means being in possession of a plethora of useful skills. That means working diligently at all times to sharpen your mind and perfect your body. You must be strong, you must be sharp, you must be creative, you must be adaptive. And together, we must reconfigure the paradigm that currently exists into one that advantages us. Democracy is not the way. Majority rules has failed. The majority is too easily manipulated, too low IQ, too low information, too easily controlled by fear and by cheap psychological manipulation. And yet, no matter how strong you become, you must resist the urge. No matter how strong you may be, you must resist the urge to despise the weak. Because we must become strong so that we may defend those who are weak. That's the only justifiable purpose of strength, in my view. If your strength is only about the furtherance of your own power and your own ego and your own prestige, then the sickness that pervades this world will never be alleviated. So to all my lesbian, gay, bisexual, pansexual, transgender, intersex, non-binary, asexual, etc., friends and fans and family, I say to you that your love should not be an issue. Your sex should not be an issue. Your manner of dressing yourself should not be an issue. Your life should not be an issue. And when I am king of this world, it won't be. I hereby make my first decree. By the order and authority of the crown, all consensual, sexual, or romantic relationships between adult human beings will be legally recognized as valid and protected forevermore. No laws shall abridge this freedom, nor shall any institution or individual of the earth fail to recognize them, lest they directly challenge the crown. And I'm not delusional. I know I have no power to make decrees. Not yet, anyway. But soon, I will. How can I possibly do it? Not without the help of those who believe, or those who want to believe. That's why I would direct you to my Amazon wish list down below. Unlike many Amazon wish lists, everything on mine is geared towards helping my uh, self-improvement journey along. And everything on there is explained in terms of how it will do that. If you want to be part of that, then uh, what do I need from you? Uh, if you want to be part of this movement, that is. Right now, what I need from you is uh, to commit your to, to, uh, commitment, you know, to, to make yourself better than you are, to, to eat better, to, to study, to work out, to learn valuable skills, to find and develop your emotional core, to be resilient, to commit yourself to, to reason, to reject the appeals of emotion, to reject the appeals of group psychology, to practice confidence and charisma, to start asking yourself, how can you be better than you are? And to work towards those objectives. Because together, my siblings in power, this entire planet will be ours at last. And even as I speak these words, even as I declare them boldly, the enemies of truth and the despisers of humanity won't ever see us coming until we're standing right behind them. I'm TJ Kirk, the future king of this planet, ordering you to become more than you are, ordering you to stop whining about your problems and join me in solving them. Also, if you wish to serve me directly, as I wish to serve humanity, then contact me on my Twitter account and tell me what, you, what skills you uh, possess that you're willing to use for our objectives. Right now, what I really need are writers, editors, web designers, philosophers, scientists, charismatic personalities, comedians, etc. We're in the propaganda phase. We need people with skills that serve those ends. If you wish to advance the cause but you don't have any skills yet, PayPal contributions or contributions to my Amazon wish list are required. Even if you don't believe in me, you know you want to see where this goes, so spare a dollar. 
Just a measly little dollar, right? <laughs> I love you all. Peace the fuck out.